Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com. Today we're going to continue going through this World Series of Poker final table. Thanks to GG Poker and the World Series of Poker for letting me use their cards up content. These events have been fantastic so far, lots and lots of people playing. This event had a total of 892 people for a $2,500 buy-in tournament. I wanted to review this tournament in particular because it features Kristen Bicknell, one of the best players in the world and also a bunch of other very strong players. So let's get right to it. We've already about one level into the tournament. And we'll just continue moving forward. This is a relatively long hand history. So this is gonna be a multi, multi-part video series. Hopefully that's okay with you. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments. If you do like it, well, click like, click subscribe. It's free, it costs you nothing. It lets the computers know that you like me. All right, this is interesting right here. King nine suited raised, right? Let's rewind it just a smidge. King nine suited raised and the ace five offsuit just really quickly folded. I think this is a pretty easy spot to go all in. And the reason I like all in in this spot is because yes, Patrick should be reasonably tight given there are these other two short stacks, but He's going to fold some hands when he, ra when he raises, and I highly doubt his raising range is only the nuts. Now, I mean, clearly it's not because we see he has king-nine suited. Maybe it is mostly the nuts, or maybe it's all sorts of stuff. It's tough to say. A lot of people really do not adjust to payout implications so, so well. They're not fully aware of ICM or how tight ICM will dictate Patrick should play in this scenario. I think if Patrick is going to play this hand, he probably just wants to rip it in preflop because that's going to result in your opponent's folding the vast majority of the time. Whereas here, if you do raise, um, Aya in the small blind should just rip it in very frequently, I think. And interestingly enough, if, if uh, the small blind folds, the big blind should often rip it in pretty frequently, and that's going to force Patrick to fold unless he has a very premium hand. That said, maybe he just doesn't care. Maybe he's going to call it off with the king-nine suited. I guess we'll see. But I definitely would have gone all in with that ace five offsuit. You don't like the ace five offsuit, but as the big stack, you get to apply a lot of pressure to the shallow and medium stacks. Terrible turn for Patrick. So I'm fine with the call jack nine suit to preflop. Definitely check the flop. King nine probably just wants to bet the flop. If you bet and get raised, you can fold. If you bet and get called, well, king or jack is good. Usually. <laughs> Turns a king. Jack nine goes for a small bet. I think you can just go bigger in this scenario with jack nine. You really want to get your opponent stack all in by the river at this point because you have almost the nuts. And it's very easy for Patrick to have a hand like ace-king, ace-10, maybe like queen-jack, maybe uh, jack-10, something like that that will call a bigger bet. And if he has a hand like 9-8, he'll probably call a bigger bet, right? If he has a flush roll, I'll call a bigger bet. So it's very important whenever you are betting to consider the range you're likely against. And in this scenario, I think Dong is going to be against a range of a lot of big cards. And when Patrick just has nothing, he's going to fold to, in, to any bet anyway, right? So you don't really care about when he has nothing like pocket threes. He's always going to fold. So notice now he can't really get stacks in by the river, which is a bit of a bummer. If he bet just a little bit bigger on the turn, he could have jammed the river, and that king, ten, a king nine would have been very, very tempted to call. Instead, he left Patrick with 739,000 chips, which is a lot of chips to leave your opponent. It is worth mentioning, I'm not trying to be overly critical of any of these players. All these players are very, very strong poker players. I'm definitely looking at this as an observer. I get the idea that betting small makes sense if you think your opponent's range is all weak, but I would disagree that the opponent's range is all weak. I think the opponent's range is going to be either total garbage, it's always going to fold, or something decently strong you can extract more value from. When a lot of people watch poker hand histories, they try to approach it in, in the, in the, from the mindset of, I'm going to find what people do wrong. We're also trying to find what people do right, right? Like right there, Simon should fold very, very frequently with the, well, anything in the small blind because the big stack is on the left. Ace nine offsuit from the early position from Kristen is a dicey one. It's probably just a fold. I like the fold there. So you may say, why in the world would ace king suited make a giant all in in this scenario? The reason is because there are these three shallow stacks. If you three bet small or to any, any reasonable amount, you're going to get called by the big stack some portion of the time. You're going to miss the flop a decent amount of the time, and then you're going to be in a bad scenario post-flop. By just ripping it in, you know you're making a profitable shove. The initial raiser is almost never going to call. You're going to win the pot. 
And if you do get called, you still have a pretty good amount of equity. So this is the only play you should be making when there are three 10 big blind stacks hanging out. Four is obviously an easy fold. I would recommend, it seems like players are playing pretty quickly. I would generally recommend playing a little bit slower just across the board. You don't want to just like snap rip it in with your nut hands. Bellarmino is going to raise and these sixes are going to be all in. I think all in is the only option. You don't really want to call because you're going to see a lot of bad flops. And the King-10 suited probably has to call it off. I mean, I would call it off here. Anytime you're putting in like eight or nine or 10 big blinds into a pot that's going to be about 20 or 21 or 22, you just have to call it off. Folding in this scenario would be just way too tight. You don't love it with the King-10 suited, but it's, it's like fine. It's fine enough. River is the 10 and Paul is out in eighth place for $40,500. All right, two shallow stacks now. Everybody else has 25 big blinds or more. Notice here, Bellarmino really getting after it, which I like. I think you should be opening very wide as the big stack. This is definitely what you want to be doing. Raise from Bellarmino again. So cool spot. Notice Kristen and Patrick are both pretty shallow here with the same stack. At some point, you just have to pick a hand and go with it. And it's obvious, at least to me, knowing that Bellarmino seems to be just very aggressive. He's playing his big stack well. He's raising with a wide range. This is the type of player who's not going to let up. He's just going to raise and raise and raise and raise until the short stacks are out, and then people are going to play back at him, right? So this is a spot where I think you do need to jam the king-jack offsuit. It's kind of like you're calling off with it, but not quite. You have some fold equity. And I don't think you're like printing loads of money by jamming here, but what's the alternative? Sit here and blind out, and you know, you're probably going to end up taking 7th or 6th if you do that. Uh, seventh place is 55,000, six is 75,000, whereas first is 356,000. I mean, I understand that the 10 big blind sack is kind of unlikely to win the tournament, but you're not going to win the tournament at all by blinding out. And I think your best option in this scenario is probably to just try to rip it in and hope for a double or a fold. If you think Bellarmino is playing snugly, though, I'm okay with the fold, but I, I just don't think he's playing snugly. And like right there, you even have some fold equity if he's opening the literal jack two suited, right? If that was, um, like, let's say Jerome opening, I would have been a little bit more inclined to fold because Jerome should be way tighter than Bellarmino. But Bellarmino just gets to open very wide as the big stack. And he did. You may say, well, is that too wide? Ooh, that was too tight right here. You got to jam this ace-eight offsuit. Easy jam in my mind. Can't be folding ace-eight offsuit on the button with 10 big blinds. I mean, clearly Patrick's just in the, I'm going to try to outlast Kristen phase. Minray's under the gun. Easy call. I think an easy all-in. You got to think Jerome with three-bet his best hands, so he probably doesn't have a best hand. Now, if Kristen does jam, Jerome is going to call it off frequently, but very often it's going to be with an underpair or it's going to be with random overcards. So I, I like the all-in. Wow, twos rips it. Um, How do we feel about this? So what's Kristen's all-in range in this scenario? You got to think she has something pretty good. Let's get out Equilab real quick because I highly doubt Kristen is ever bluffing in this scenario. Let's give 2-2 two -two here and let's figure out Kristen's jamming range. Let's presume it is, I mean, it's got to be good, right? It just like has to be. Let's presume it's even on the looser side. Let's presume it's this, okay? In this scenario, notice 2-2 two -two has 37% equity. And in this situation... Uh, Bellarmino had to put in, let's get out the calculator so we don't screw this up. I'm bad at mental math on, on in videos. He had to put in a total of 700 minus 160 because that's what he already had, already had in. So he had to put in 540 to win a pot that's going to be 7, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I guess 5 to win 17. So I guess you're close to... Fine if, if she's on the looser side. So you need 32% equity to break even, but there are some pad implications, so you need a little bit more. Let's call it like 34 or 35% equity. And you see 2-2 two -two is barely there against a, loose, against a range like this. What if uh, Kristen's a little bit tighter and she does this range? You see now you're 
roughly break even. And also, don't forget, every once in a while, Jerome's going to be trapping you with aces, kings, or queens, and you're going to be in terrible shape. So I don't like this all in, unless you think Kristen's just absurd, but she has not been absurd so far. She's been snug. She's, she's been shoving kind of wide when it's folded to her, and she's had a pretty good run of cards to the point that she's gotten to shove a lot, but she's not, like, punting it in here with... I mean, like, even if she's punting it in here with threes, you still lose. I, I do not like this all in by Bellarmine. I think this is way too loose. Because Jerome's also going to be trapping you sometimes. Don't forget that Jerome is sporadically going to be trapping you with aces or kings. And, and then that's just awful. And I think Jerome does have a fold here, by the way. When it goes all in, re-all in, you just need to fold. It's unfortunate. But, yeah, you're going to be dominating Bellarmino sometimes, but he's going to have ace-king a lot. He's going to have pairs a lot. Kristen's going to be blocking your ace a lot with, like, ace-king, ace-queen, etc. And look at that. The ace-queen would have scoop-a-looped all the money. Instead, Kristen's going to get the double. Double and some. Wow. Look, everyone else showing the nuts. <laughs> Kristen's hand was like fourth or fifth best at the table. Oh, that's fantastic. Drone didn't show his ace-queen. <laughs> oh, goodness. Poker's a fun game, huh? All right, ten or nine big blind shove from the one short stack. You probably have to call it off with a king-10 suited in the big blind. Queen to Nosu never is never a call, but I think this is a call. King Ten Su is going to do pretty well against the one short stack shoving range. Like notice whenever this player is the one short stack, they're highly incentivized to jam much wider now because there is no other short stack they're trying to outlast. So that should result in them shoving wide, which should result in you calling off wide, and King Ten Suit is in fine shape. It's not great, but it's fine. Of course it depends on how wide Patrick is jamming, but I mean he's playing 22% of hands, which, you know, is some. I suppose he was playing almost no hands, you could justify the fold. All right, min raise from the small blind, which is a change of pace. Bellarmino is 4xing it earlier. I think he got a float with the king high. I like the turn check from the jack six, although you could continue betting small, I think. Either one's acceptable. I usually check. I don't think this king high needs to bet. If it is going to bet, it wants to go tiny just to extract protection mostly because no better hand is going to fold let's talk about that right uh, this king three on the turn if no better hand folds should you be betting and the answer is probably just no right unless you plan on also betting the river or if you can bet so small to the point that it's basically nothing and you get your opponent to fold out stuff like queen jack that has some equity or queen jack that may bluff you on the river so you could certainly go various ways in this spot but I, I usually just check the king high because I think king high is the best hand a lot of the time. Looks like he's turning it into a complete bluff, though, trying to say he has the ace. But like, what are you trying to get to fold? You really think a seven's going to fold? I'd be shocked if a seven folds. You really think a six is going to fold? I mean, maybe the six folds. Maybe. I'm a pretty big hero in spots like this for third pot. I don't fold very many sixes. <laughs> Oh, maybe I should start folding, though. I mean, as soon as I start folding, they show up with the king high turned into a bluff. All right, king high does not, or six does not fold. And I don't think a six is going to fold there, which is why I don't really love that bluff. If you're going to make that bluff, you need to go much bigger. That's your only chance to get a pair to fold in that spot. And the thing is, king high beats random queen high and whatnot. King's open. Kristen's probably going to call. I don't think you can ever fold this hand. I understand that Patrick is shallow, but 7-6 suited flops pretty well to the point that you just can't make a very, very nitty fold immediately. Sevens will open it up. Sevens may just rip it all in. Notice both, all the players you have to act have about 20 big blinds or fewer. It's probably just a shove with the sevens. And you can actually shove that spot pretty wide because the button and cut off, or button and small blind can't call all that often at all because of the 10 big blind stack and the big blind. So I think that's a spot where you could rip it all in very wide. And I probably would have shoved sevens for sure and like the ace X type hands for sure. Maybe min raise the better hands, min raise the junk that can easily fold to a shove. You may say that if we do that, um, isn't this a scenario where it makes it very, very easy for your opponent to know what you have? Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But the thing is, if you announce, all right, I have a pretty good hand like sevens, what are they really going to do? Just they have to wait for the nuts. 
All right, here we have Jack-7 suited raising it up. Again, Bellarmino's is really getting after it, but, but I like it. I like it as long as the shallow stacks are playing pretty snugly, which they seem to be doing. Terrible flop for the nines. I, I like the just call with the nines with the second chip stack. One thing worth mentioning, when you have this big stack, it's very easy to get it in your head. Like, I'm playing literally every hand. Obviously, these people are going to play back at me at some point. But very often, they just don't because they are highly incentivized to just try to play kind of tight and take third, fourth, fifth place. And for that reason, you really just don't need to have it in your head that I need to make wide calls like, like you did with the pocket twos earlier. It's like, yeah, it's fine, but it's also not printing loads of money. I think you're better off just keeping the shallow stack shallow and continuing to lean on them pretty hard. That said, it sells all a mountain of chips. Right here is a good example of a spot where you just don't need to do anything. This Jack-7 does decide to go for the river bluff. So earlier I said that it's kind of hard to make a pair fold. This is a spot where it's a little bit easier because it's very easy for big blind to have a king or a queen. When all these other players check, it's very easy for them not to. That said, again, it's just somewhat likely that um, you'll end up... It's somewhat likely that you'll get called because you're betting into two reasonably strong ranges that likely have marginal made hands, but he gets the Jack-10 to fold. Sorry for my kids yelling outside. Can y'all hear my kids yelling? That's what happens as soon as I sit down to make a video. They're being nice and quiet. Then we start making the video and then they go off. Ah, Papa life. Wow. Called it off with the ace-10. Okay. That's a pretty wide call with the ace-10 offsuit there, I think. I definitely would have folded. You have to think Bellarmino is going to be at least reasonable with his shoves. And he was. He had eights. I don't think he's ripping it in overly wide here. So I think ace-10 offsuit is going to be in pretty bad shape on average because he's always going to jam ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-10. And like queens, jacks, tens, you have to think. So I'm surprised he called it off. That was that was very optimistic. That was basically volunteering for a flip. The problem, the big problem, by the way, with volunteering for a flip in this scenario is that you're not guaranteed to just be in a great spot. The times you want to, quote-unquote, volunteer for a flip and make a big mistake according to ICM is mainly when Bellarmino is running over the table, and if you double, now you have the big stack and can run over the table. But that's not the case. Notice that Jerome just doubled up to a medium stack that's going to have to sit here and blind out more. So he didn't really improve his position in the tournament all that much. I mean, yeah, he has chips now, but he didn't really improve his situation because he went from a medium stack to a medium stack, which doesn't really do a ton of good. Like, yeah, you have more chips, but Bellarmino is still just going to get to raise as often as he wants. And that doesn't really help you. It just means that maybe you'll ladder up another payout spot or two by being tight. But that's not great. You'd much rather make a call in a scenario like that where you would have the big stack. You'd be able to lean on people and then use that big stack to hopefully try to win the poker tournament. So there are times to somewhat ignore ICM when your future profitability is just going to go through the roof because you became the chip leader. Being the chip leader is very valuable in tournaments because you get to apply pressure to everybody else. Being a medium stack is really not where you want to be because you just have to sit there and be tight. Easy all in from Patrick. Can the pocket eights make the call? Uh, probably not. It's close. It's close. I mean, Patrick is obviously highly incentivized to jam wide because he's under the gun and he is the one shallow stack. I'm not entirely sure that's a call with eights, though. It's it's close. Don't get me wrong. It really depends on what Patrick's jamming. If he's jamming, like, all sorts of suited ace-x and whatnot, then sure. But so far, he's been pretty snug. He hasn't done anything insane, as far as I can tell. And uh, you have to think he's going to jam all of his playable range. He's probably not jamming, like, fours there, I wouldn't think. So if he's not jamming fours, it's going to be roughly a break-even call for the eights. And I think you want to avoid those spots. So it's probably going to fold around to Chris unless she, she min raises or rips it. It's probably just a shove. You really don't want to min raise and get jammed on. She does min raise though, and I have no problem with this. There's some line between like tens, nines, eights, where you don't really want to min raise and get shoved on because you're going to be flipping the vast majority of the time when you call it off. Um, obviously not in this scenario, but by just open jamming, that's obviously going to be profitable. The question is, is it the most profitable play? We discussed this concept a bit in the first part of this series. Make sure you check that out if you have not. 
If you like this series, click like, click subscribe, share it with your friends. I would appreciate that. If you don't like it, well, tell me. If you don't like my kids screaming in the hall, tell me and I'll um, put them out on the street. All right. Here we have nothing for Aya, Alia, Ilya. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Anotsky. And Anotsky. I am so bad with names. Apologize, everyone. Uh, can the Nine of Clubs bet the river? It's one of these spots where if the opponent is weakish and straightforward, you can definitely bet. If the opponent is getting in there and battling, then you probably don't want to bet because every once in a while you're going to get raised as a bluff. And if you get raised on this river, it is miserably bad. So that's the spot where I think betting the river is fine. But as the shallow stack in that scenario, I think you're opening the door to get jammed on some portion of the time, which is, or raised, which is very, 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 very bad. All right, I put the kids out on the street, so they'll be quiet now. All right. Kington offsuit for Jerome seems like an easy fold. Kristen has a spot where she certainly can open if she feels like it. I would probably min raise this one, but folding's fine too. Either play is acceptable. Imagine Simon should defend pretty wide here. Even if you know Kristen's raising mostly reasonable hands, you should still defend your big blind somewhat wide, especially with hands that flop reasonably well, like Jack Nine offsuit. You can't just fold everything because you think the initial razor is tight because you're getting really good odds. And also, it's worth mentioning, um, Vlada talks about this in our book, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games down there, about how as the bigger stack in scenarios like this, you can just apply an immense amount of pressure to the shallow stacks. And they, in turn, just can't really bet all that frequently. They have to do a whole lot more checking and betting small, which lets you realize your equity easier when you're deep stacked, which is true, right? You're, this is a scenario where Kristen is incentivized to ideally not get all in without a substantial edge, which means she has to do more checking, which means you get to realize your equity with this jack nine offsuit more often when you flop gut shots or an overcarve of backdoor draws when it just goes check, check, or check, small bet. Facing a small bet here, though, I think you just have to be done with it. Simon decides to get after it, though. Wow, that's strong. I don't mind it, given the guy's playing no, he's played no hands. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps he studied these ICM spots more than I have and he knows just check raise a ton in scenarios like this because if they don't have a flush or a flush draw they're in rough shape well, let's see if he goes for it I mean this would be this would be aggressive if he if he goes for this he's gonna go for small bet river jam wow it's fun to watch huh well you gotta jam the river now right Obviously, you could just be jamming into a boat or a flush, but you got to think you have no value whatsoever. Shocked he didn't go for the river bluff, even with the jack. Interesting scenario for sure. I mean, you have to think. So if you think about Kristen's range, right? Think about Kristen's range for a second. She bet the flop, called a raise. So she probably has an ace or a king, with or without a club. What is the most likely club she's going to have opening from this position? Well, it's going to be the Queen of Clubs or the Jack of Clubs or the Ten of Clubs, right? And one of those just came, which removes a decent amount of the possible flushes from her range. Also, a lot of hands are going to be like Ace of Diamonds, Queen, offsuit, right? So like she can't, she can't have it, a lot of her range is diminished because there are these three high clubs on the board. And notice Simon and the Big Blind certainly could check raise Queen of Clubs X on the flop if it felt like it. And um, he would very likely continue bluffing the turn because he have a lot of threes in his range. Defending wide from the big blind. So I think this is a, a bluff on the river, even though he lacks the... Even though he made a pair on the river. The pair on the river doesn't really do him much good. And if Kristen does have a hand like sevens with a seven of clubs that just decided to hang on really tight, then maybe it still folds to the river jam? I mean, you, you lose everything, right? Cool spot. I don't think Kristen needs to bluff. Um, she sporadically wins, I guess. Maybe she's going to turn it into a bluff, though. That'd be cool. What are you trying to get to fold? A three? Three's not going to fold. You chop with the aces. Just chop it up. I would chop it up. Wonder how long she's going to think. Check, check. <laughs> you got to love winning that pot with the ace four. You probably don't think you're going to win that pot with the ace four there. Yeah, I think Simon missed the all-in on the river. 
10-8 offsuit, I think you can probably limp. Now, you're going to get raised a ton, but you need to limp and then fold some hands from the small blind. I think connected hands are certainly reasonable. I love the men raised with the aces. Unfortunately, he's probably not going to get a whole lot of action. I like the defend and the raise. All this looks good. You gotta presume Bellarmino is gonna bet the flop. You don't really want to bet and get raised, but if, if Kristen has nothing, she's just gonna fold. And if she does have a pair, she's obviously not gonna fold, but you have lots of equity against those hands. She's probably incentivized to not raise all that often in this scenario because she is very clear medium stack. There's Patrick over here with a with almost no chips. Check, check, turn. I would just check the river with queen 10 for sure, and then Bellarmino can put in a normal value, but I don't even think it's especially thin. Kristen could go for a small bet on the river. I think that'd be fine. But I, I like the check. Checking makes it easy for you just to check call. I mean, she's going to lose here, but checking and then check calling seems like the play to me. If Bellarmino had any no showdown value here, you'd almost certainly bluff. If he is value betting a 10, you chop with some of them, right? He's probably not going to be value betting with worse, so we do essentially have a bluff catcher. But against the bigger stack who is incentivized to be aggressive, I think you should call with your pretty strong bluff catchers. Ace-line offsuit lets the open. Bellarmino, I think, has a pretty nice 3-bet spot in this scenario. He can definitely 3-bet and then fold to a jam. I like that a lot. I don't think he needs to go quite so big. I think that just risks too much unnecessarily. He went to 3.3x or 3.5x, something like that. Eight seven suited folds. Notice Simon's just being really tight because he is presumably trying to outlast these shallow stacks, which, to be fair, he probably should do given he has the big stack Bellarmino on his direct left. This is actually a really bad spot for Simon because he does have the big stack on his direct left. There's not a ton you can do. There really isn't, whenever the big sack's under left. You just kind of have to sit there and wait for good cards. Raise from Jerome. I like the all-in from Dong. And this will be an easy fold from the Ace-4 suited. You don't want to fold the Ace-4 suited, but you're in bad shape against any reasonable shoving range. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. We're about uh, two-fifths the way through, so I guess we have another three parts left in us. So good, that'll be nice and fun. If you enjoyed this video, click like, click subscribe. I would appreciate that. And also check out my training site, pokercoaching.com. We have all sorts of very in-depth analysis. I know we're kind of going through this hand history a little bit quickly. Um, we're not going too, in deep on any, too deep on any individual hand, but if you want to see more of that type of content, definitely check out pokercoaching.com. Have a great day. Good luck in your games. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.